All right, for the topic of calculus, I've split up calculus into two different sections, calculus for derivatives and calculus for integration. And that's just because calculus is so big. So what I've done is uh, for integration, um, I've come up with these different very important topics. And that's because I've gone through every past exam and I've looked through what are the things that show up most often. And these are the things from integration that show up most often. Now calculus as a topic is one of the most technically difficult for a lot of students and it actually is very heavily weighted on exams. So it's the second most heavily weighted uh, topic on all the uh, different topics. It's only uh, statistics and probability that's more heavily weighted. So this is very, very important, but I really think it's one of the most difficult ones uh, calculus is and in general and integration is the toughest of those. So here we're in the sort of hardest of the hard for a lot of students. I'm going to try to show you some nice easy tricks here. So first of all, we have indefinite integral. Uh, what is that actually? Um, this is how we actually find an integral. In other words, the area under a curve. That's the whole idea behind an integral. We're trying to take any old curvy looking curve and trying to calculate what is the area under that curve. Of course, we can do it with lots of squares or rectangles, but we have some nice easy tricks to help us with these. And here comes a really bad joke because when you're doing these, you might think, you know, you have to do this thing called, you have to integrate these things. And I always thought when you're doing them, it's integrate. So what we can do is we can have indefinite integrals. These are things where you always have to remember a, uh, each of these things has a plus C when you're done, some sort of constant. Now these ones right here, uh, they show up pretty commonly on both different types of exams. So they show up on paper one and paper two uh, pretty evenly here. Uh, and then we have indefinite integrals. These are ones uh, just like these, except these ones have conditions. So these are here are ones where you have enough conditions in order to determine what is the value of this plus c. So what is the value of this constant? And those show up uh, commonly on paper one and paper two. Uh, then we have definite integrals. These are places where we do have bounds. So that means that we're actually doing an area from a certain place to a certain place. So you know exactly where you're starting and where you're finishing. These ones you actually calculate that area for sure. So these are here are also paper one and two. Now we have more complicated integrals. Uh, this is because what we do here is within these indefinite integrals we have some tricks. We're told some tricks about polynomials, so what to do for polynomials, what to do for trigonometric ones, what to do for exponential ones. And then what we do is for more complicated integrals, what we do is something of the form ax plus b. So in other words, let's say it's like, I don't know, 2x minus 4, something like that. Let's say to the power of 5. Let's say this was my equation here. I try to find the integral of this. So this is how we would actually do it. We use this more complicated integrals trick. And that one is also on paper 1 and 2. And then we have integration by substitution. A lot of students think this is the hardest one. Uh, it often looks the grossest for sure. This one here is one where you're trying to find you've got two different functions going on at the same time and you're trying to find where one is a derivative of the other one. And then there's a little notation you can use that actually works with something called integral of f u du. And I remember when I learned this stuff I always thought it was really hard so I'm always like you know f u like f u du. So there's a nice easy trick we can use to actually solve these and these are heavily featured on exams and these are some of the most technically difficult looking ones mm -hmm. and they're on paper one where you don't get a calculator. So this is really important skill to learn. So I show you how to do this and hopefully demystify this and sort of break it so it's not so difficult. Then we have the volume of revolution. This is when you take some sort of function, let's say I don't know like x squared or something like that, that's just the positive version of it let's say. You take that and you revolve it around the x-axis by 360 degrees. So you go kind of warm like this. So it makes some sort of shape like this. And so you figure out what's the volume of that thing. And so this one here shows up on paper one and paper two. It's pretty common. And last we have kinematics. This is not exactly integration. This actually uses integrals and it uses derivatives. This is doing physics. That's why I love this because I'm a physicist. So this is where we look at things like uh, displacement, which is S of T. We look at velocity, which is V of T. And we look at acceleration, which is A of T. So if we look at these ones, we learn that if you go, if you're given displacement and you want to find the velocity, oh, then you have to find the derivative of that thing. But if you're given, let's say, velocity and you want to go up, so to speak, you want to go and find the displacement, you have to integrate. So again, you have to do integrate, right? And if you do this, these are most commonly found on paper two. 
So this is an overview of the different very important topics, these different things that we have to do. That's again because if you don't have much time to study, this is in a few hours, this is what you can study in order to have a really good shot at acing those exams, especially these questions here. Now, now if we're going to look at an exam and try to open it up and sort of see what's behind the hood here, what we can do is we can try to do a prediction. What's the most likely thing that's going to show up on your exam for integration? Well, in order, first of all, you're pretty much always going to be given some integrals to do, and they're likely going to be definite integrals, in other words, with bounds where you're finding the area, but second most likely is indefinite, where you don't have the bounds. See, same thing with paper two, integration, definite, and then into indefinite, in that order. So definite is most common, indefinite slightly less common. And if you're going to do integration, it's most likely going to be polynomial type, see, that's the first one. Uh, second most likely is trigonometric, so you're looking with uh, sine and cos. And then third most likely is with exponential, using e to the power of something. Now for paper one, the next most likely thing you're going to have to do, other than just a generic uh, integration, is going to be to use integration by substitution. And that's the one that's really difficult for a lot of students. Then we have volume of revolution, that shows up very often, taken in function and then spinning it around. On paper one, without a calculator. Paper two, you still have the integration, you still have the volume of revolution, that shows up second. There's not so much substitution on paper two. Um, but you have kinematics shows up very often on paper two. So this gives you a really good idea, I think, what's likely to show up as far as the questions. And this right here is all the very important topics, what we're going to cover. Shall we get started?